Hey, good morning. I see some of you starting to get on. When you get on, uh, say hi and let me know that you're here. Hi, good morning, Debbie. Just getting our video shared out. Um, give me one second. Hi, good morning, guys. I'm so glad you're jumping on. One more place to share this morning. Hey, good morning, Karen. All right, I think I, <laughs> I think I now have the video shared to all of the places that it goes this morning. So that is good. All right. I think I'm ready to go, <laughs> ready on this end. I hope you guys are ready this morning too. Um, hey, good morning, mom. Oh, happy Valentine's Day to all of you too. Um, you guys are all very close to my heart. And so I give thanks um, every day for all of you, but today too, especially. Hi, good morning, Frida. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, Velma. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Tom and Mary Ann, good morning, Ginger. Good morning, Doreen. I am so glad you guys are here this morning. Hi, good morning, Sherry and Bob. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Eileen. Um, <laughs> good morning, Mike. I'm not going to get done saying good morning. Good morning, Heidi. It's so good to have all of you guys here with me this morning. Hi, good morning, Diane. Um, if you... You guys are saying hi like crazy. Oh, and you give thanks for me too. Well, thank you. Hey, so just like fun side note this morning because you're kind of my captive audience at the moment. St. Valentine, um, who today is named after, was actually probably a priest or a bishop. And he was someone who in uh, ancient Rome before Christianity became the dominant uh, religion of that empire. He uh, took care of and looked after persecuted Christians until he was actually killed himself uh, for doing so. So, hey, that's St. Valentine's, but um, hopefully we can figure out um, ways to take care of each other. But there's your little piece of St. Valentine's trivia uh, for for today. The Eastern Church, actually, the Eastern Orthodox Church celebrates Valentine's Day. I think it's either in June or July. Anyway, yay, very thrilling, right? <laughs> anyway, if you are joining us for the first time, uh, welcome. We are so glad to have you. If you're watching the replay, we are glad to have you here as well. So please know that any comments, especially prayer requests that you make in this video will be held by me and by the community this week. If you are willing and able to share our video stream out there for those looking for a space uh, to connect with the Holy this morning, I'd really appreciate that. I would just ask that you do not share the video into other church groups or pages. There's been some of that, not with you guys, but I know from colleagues happening. So share it to your own stream. That would be fantastic, but don't try and share it to other churches. Generally, they don't like that because they're kind of doing their own thing. Um, if you uh, want to get whatever it is you need for communion this morning, uh, whether juice or wine or bread or crackers or something, we're going to celebrate together and whatever else you need to make the space that you're in feel a little more holy this morning, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, some juice. Um, if you're my kid, you're eating goldfish crackers while, <laughs> while you listen and watch church, a uh, candle, whatever it is that you need. We're going to get started here in just a few moments. So I invite you to join me in taking a deep breath and welcome to worship. Our worship service for today is called When the World is About to Turn Again, Living with Change. In the last few months, we've gotten great with living with change, expected and unexpected both. And this morning is called the Transfiguration which is traditionally the day the church has celebrated the end of the season of Epiphany, which we started at the beginning of January. And it marks the transition from Epiphany, which is all about seeing God in this world, to the season of Lent, which we start on Wednesday. As always, all of the words that are on the screen this morning are invitations for you to participate in worship, either out loud uh, with the people who you are with or quietly in your heart. 
And so please join me this morning for our call to worship. Welcome to this place. It has been a whirlwind of confusion and wonder these past months, but you are here in exactly the right place where nothing and everything has and will happen at once. For right where you are in your very own room, where life has unfolded in ordinary and extraordinary ways, is now where God will be, where God has been all along, had you dared to see it. My beloved, God has never left us. God has always been with us. We have wanted to wander, to be any but, anywhere but where we find ourselves, but we are being invited to stay, to stay right where we are and find God. So stay if you dare, stay and see the glory of God. Stay and be transformed. Amen. Our gathering song for worship this morning is You Are Holy. Our service continues with our prayer, and I invite you to join me. Holy God of wholeness, ever present, ever near, you bring us together in this place to be fed, to be renewed, to seek understanding. But we do not want to stay here. We do not want this to be all that there is, for we dream of what was before. We dream of what will be when this time that we are in is finally over. And so we pray right now, right here, right where we are for you to hear us. Hear us and give us hope to believe that dazzling things await us in this place as well as in the future. Ever present God in this place through your challenging through your revealing through our worship we will dare to believe that we are already being changed that we are as beautiful and beloved as we have always been and when the time is finally right we will step out of this place into the dawn of a new day transfigured into exactly the people we need to be for all that is yet to come. Amen. My beloved, today we are being called exactly as we are from exactly where we are to open our eyes, to open our hearts, to open our minds to the God who is with us, 
So join me in giving witness to the one who is transfiguring us today, tomorrow, and all days, saying the peace of Christ be with you always. Please take a moment to share Christ's peace with one another, those with whom you are gathered, and those with whom you are gathered in this place across all distances. And our service for this morning continues with the readings. Today's reading is from the second book of Kings, chapter 2. Just before God took Elijah to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on a walk out of Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. God has sent me on an errand to Bethel. Elisha said, not on your life. I'm not going to let you out of my sight. So they both went to Bethel. The guild of prophets at Bethel met Elisha and said, did you know that God is going to take your master away from you? Yes, he said, I know it, but keep it quiet. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. God has sent me on an errand to Jericho. Elisha said, not on your life. I'm not letting you out of my sight. So they both went to Jericho. The guild of prophets at Jericho came to Elisha and said, did you know that God is going to take your master away from you today? Yes, he said, I know it, but keep it quiet. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. God has sent me on an errand to the Jordan. Elisha said, not on your life. I'm not going to let you out of my sight. And so the two of them went on their way together. Meanwhile, 50 men from the Guild of Prophets gathered some distance away while the two of them stood at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and hit the water with it. The water divided, and the two men walked through on dry land. When they reached the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, What can I do for you before I am taken from you? Ask anything. Elisha said, your life repeated in my life. I want to be a holy man just like you. That's a hard one, said Elijah. But if you're watching when I'm taken from you, you'll get what you've asked for, but only if you're watching. And so it happened. They were walking along and talking. Suddenly, a chariot of horses of fire came between them and Elijah went up in a whirlwind to heaven. Elisha saw it all and shouted, my father, my father, you, the chariot and cavalry of Israel. When he could no longer see anything, he grabbed his robe and ripped it to pieces. Word of God, word of life. God of glory. You took your friends with you when you went to pray on the mountain. You revealed to them the glory of Jesus, your beloved son, on his way to the cross. We do not live on mountaintops, but we too would glimpse your glory in the ordinary days of our lives and in the community of your son in which you have chosen to dwell. We look for you among people who have no power, no rights, no voice. We look for you among those who live on the streets of our city, whose housing is inadequate, whose homes are not safe. We look for you among those who grieve a past that is no more and fear a future that seems full of loss. God who meets us in the broken places, shine the light of Christ deep into our lives so we may carry that light into dark places and point to the one whose brokenness is our salvation. Our gospel for this morning comes from Mark, the ninth chapter. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain. His appearance changed. He was transfigured from the inside out right before their eyes. His clothes shimmered glistening white, whiter than any bleach could make them. Elijah, along with Moses, came into view in deep conversation with Jesus. 
Peter interrupted, Rabbi, this is a great moment. Let's build three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He blurted this out without thinking, stunned as they all were by what they were seeing. Just then a light radiant cloud enveloped them and from deep in the cloud of voice, this is my son, my beloved, marked by my love. Listen to him. The next minute, the disciples were looking around, rubbing their eyes, seeing nothing but Jesus, only Jesus. Coming down the mountain, Jesus swore them to secrecy. Don't tell a soul what you saw. After the Son of Man raises the dead, you're free to talk. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And so grace and peace to you, my beloved, from the one who is transfiguring us always. Amen. So this morning, before we start the sermon, we're going to have to make a little deal between us. So when you read the names Elijah with a J and Elisha with an S-H, it is really hard if you are only listening to hear the difference between those two names. Now, you guys are at an advantage compared to the people last night who had to listen to me try and say them be with my mask on. So we're going to make this deal. We are going to pretend that Elisha with the S-H, the younger one, the follower of Elijah, that his middle name was actually John. And so we are going to call Elisha with the S-H, John, in the sermon this morning when I talk about them so you can hear the difference. So welcome to Transfiguration Sunday. The day the church, for as long as I can remember, has marked the transition from epiphany, the season of witnessing the crazy, amazing work of God in the world, to the season of Lent. The time when the world holds its breath, waiting to see if death and destruction and power and might really do get the last word in this world God loves so much. And growing up, this day, this day of transfiguration was always this day of celebration right? A day when the glory of God was so blinding that you almost couldn't bear to look at it for too long. A day when we got to see with clear eyes what it is actually like when the veil between heaven and earth gets torn in two. But the thing is, Hidden beneath the celebration that was this day, beneath the trumpets that would always play, hidden beneath the blaring of an organ that knew it could play louder than normal in celebration, hidden beneath the processions and robes and white pyramids that would always grace the altar. Yes, hidden behind all the stories pastors like to tell of their mountaintop experiences where they had heard the voice of God spoken to them in some unmistakable and always baritone voice right? Letting them know that he was with them always. Yes, underneath all of this was this current of sadness. Well, maybe not sadness exactly, but unease, confusion, loss, sorrow. And it took me years to figure out why beneath the celebration this was always there. But eventually I realized within each of the stories of the miraculous power of God that dazzles us almost to the point of blindness is a story of an ending, a story of the time that exists right as what always was before is finally no more, a story of a threshold, of a line between what was and what is still to come. And if you're anything like me, in fact, if you're human, you know that most of us are not very good at thresholds. We dread them. We struggle to cross over them. We mourn what was before them, what always was or used to be. We grieve for the predictable, the comfortable, the easy of the past. And most of the time when we meet a threshold, we refuse to cross it. Afraid of what is ahead, that is, until we have no choice, until someone or something pushes us across it raw and sad and usually unready. 
And it isn't our fault. We humans, we thrive on predictability, on routine, on certainty. In fact, right, one of the saving graces at our house during those first few months of the pandemic lockdown was the creation of our pandemic schedule, I kid you not, which hung on the wall in our living room with clear times designated each day for exercise and study and rest and reading and creativity. And you know what? It was good. It was helpful. And for a little while, it even felt holy until we realized that feeling safe and feeling holy were not exactly the same thing until we were forced to incorporate the next new thing of going back to work and going back to school into our carefully crafted living room pandemic schedule until we realized we could not stay in the place we were, stay in that way forever. But that didn't make it easy. Because crossing thresholds never are. Just take Elisha, we're going to call him John, remember, for example. After years of following Elijah around, after leaving his father's fields as a young man, just because some stranger walked up to him and wrapped his cloak around him and said, follow me. After almost eight years of learning from and loving and admiring a man who was as close to his heart as any human being, John is told it is time to say goodbye, that Elijah must leave must take the next step of his journey alone. And how does John respond to this news? <laughs> well, he sp responds by telling Elijah, no. No, I will not allow it. Just shut up, one of our text translations actually says, and he says it over and over again. I cannot let you go. He says, I will not let you go. Please, please do not leave me alone because I cannot imagine this world without me, without you, this life without you near me for all of who I am is wrapped up in who I am with you. All of how I have come to know myself, all of how I have come to un my understand myself is from being loved into life by you. Elijah, you cannot go because who will I be without you? to come back to who will I be without you to ground me on those nights when I can hardly remember who I was created to be. And so John decides to hold on to Elijah as tightly as he can, follow as closely as he can, hold on as tightly as he can until he cannot, until there is no choice until he and Elijah stand there alone on that day on the other side of the Jordan, just waiting for those fiery horses to come down and take Elijah up to heaven. And in that moment, right? In that moment that is about to be full of the glory of God in spectacular, amazing, breathtaking ways, John is forced to cross over forced to leave what was before, to turn to what is yet to come. And alone, uncertain mourning, kicking and screaming, he is finally pushed across the threshold that God has set before him. And the funny thing is, right, the glory of God, the mountaintop experience of God dazzling before him, whisking Elijah up to heaven, it doesn't make crossing over any easier for John. It doesn't fill him with wonder or joy. It simply marks the end, the point of no return. And our text tells us it breaks him. It breaks his heart right inside of him. And he can do nothing but cry out and tear his clothes to pieces. There's no glorious afterglow for John as he lies there in the dust of those fiery chariots. There is no leftover sparkle on his clothes or in his eyes from what he just witnessed when heaven and earth broke apart. Instead, there's just silence, just loss, just questions. And there is a choice, 
a choice to either stay there in that dust, clinging to the past to what he once was, or to get up to take up his grief and take up the life of Elijah he asked to be lived out in his own and go forward across the threshold into something new and unfamiliar and perhaps barely shining with the hint of possibility. And so he does. He makes a choice. He gets up from the ground. He shakes off the dust. He moves forward. He chooses to continue on not to the next mountain, but into all the valleys that lay ahead of him one step at a time, witnessing to the faith, a battered, a hard and uncertain faith that the epiphany he had just witnessed with Elijah lived through and that he lived through left in him. That when God shows up, when God shines before our eyes, we cannot stay the same. We cannot remain unchanged or we will die right where we are in the dust, on the threshold of resurrected life. And I don't know about you, my beloved, but I suspect there is no threshold no past, no memory, no predictability, no certainty that is worth dying over. At least not when the one who has walked right up to the threshold that is death and resurrected life stands before us, just as he did that day beside the Jordan and on the mountain with his disciples, inviting us to walk forward with him into what is yet to come in faith, in hope, in love, and in grace, trusting that as we do, that Jesus has already gone ahead, that Jesus has already crossed the thresholds we are about to face before us, going to all those places where we are being called, making them ready for us and for all people. Amen. Our service for this morning continues with the hymn Transfiguration Song. Now, this was actually created by one of my colleagues who lives out um, near Seattle, Washington. Her name is Gretchen Mertes, and the song is kind of a call and response, so you should be able to join with her in singing very easily. Jesus 
Jesus climbed the mountain. It's shining like the sun. Jesus climbed the mountain. My voice. We will all be changed. Our hearts and minds may be new. We will all be changed. Our hearts and minds may be new. We will all be changed. Our hearts and minds may be new. We will all be changed. Our hearts and minds may be new. We will all be changed. Our hearts and minds may be new. Our service for this morning continues with the prayers, and as always, I invite you to type your prayers into the comments of this video and know that they will be held by me and by this community this week. And so let us pray. Almighty and all merciful God, lover of justice and giver of peace, hear our prayers. For the church universal, its ministry, and the mission of the gospel. For the well-being of creation. For peace and justice in the world, the nations, and those in authority, the community. For the poor, oppressed, sick, bereaved, lonely. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. For our prayers. For the faithfully departed. Let our lives and our world be transfigured by your glory and transformed by your love in the name of your beloved one. Amen. And so now let us pause to offer all of who we are and all of what we have to God. We come to this moment, to this place, to see how the ordinary can hold the extraordinary. We come to remember that God is always leading and transforming us through what we do here. We come to our tables because we know we need to change. We need new eyes and new visions. We come trusting that the Holy Spirit will transform our bread and cups just as the Spirit shapes and forms us to shine with God's glory in the world. Amen. Amen. In our hope of transformation, we remember how it first happened. Long, long ago, before the terrible events that would follow had come to pass, Jesus gathered with his friends in an upper room and took bread, broke it, and said, This is my body, broken for you. Later, he took a cup of wine and said, This is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take this, all of you, to remember me. And so in this moment and in this place, we lift our hearts, our hopes, our voices as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So taste and see that the Lord is good. Christ shed for you. My 
Thank you for your good dream. Amen. And so may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And so before our final blessing, I'm going to get Adam up here to join us. Hi, everybody. Hi. We're going to do a classic song Hi. from a, a good old time country tune from uh, Hank Williams. And this is I Saw the Light. You guys ready? Here we go. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the Just like a blind man, I wandered along. Worries and fears I claimed for my own. Then like a blind man, that God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. A true cameo. I was a fool to wander astray. Straight is the gate and narrow the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. One more time, nice and loud. Here we go. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness. No more in night. Now I'm so happy. No sorrow inside. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. Bye, thanks, guys. Just uh, two really quick announcements. You guys, uh, you all are welcome to join us for um, coffee hour after worship today. You can stop by and say hi. I'll post a link to that. And also tomorrow is kind of last call for picking up ashes for Ash Wednesday. Some are going to be delivered, I know, today to various people. But uh, Monday night from 6 to 7 in the Prince of Peace parking lot, Fire Hall side, is kind of your last call to pick those up. And we will worship together live on Facebook and on YouTube. We're going to try YouTube at the same time on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. And as always, if you can't watch when we're watching, um, please just feel free to watch the video whenever you want. And so then our service concludes with our final blessing. In gratitude, in deep gratitude for this moment, this place, these people. We give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have been touched by the living Lord and cannot remain the same. Ask much from us. Expect much from us. Enable much by us. Encourage many through us. And gracious God, Shine in us with your glory. Let your word live in us. And may your spirit always give us hope. Amen. 
So go in peace, my beloved, changed by God. And thank you for worshiping with us this week. And I cannot wait to see all of you again soon.